Hi, everyone, and welcome to Decoding Destiny, Sound Bites from the C-Suite. Join me every week as I capture strategies from incredibly successful women and share these sound bites to help you decode challenges and map your own destiny. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. On today's episode, I have with me Lee Burgess, who's the president and CEO of High Road Strategy. We are going to be talking about raising the bar and taking big swings of bold. But before we do that, I'll give you a little bit of background on Lee. In her role, she and her colleagues work collaboratively together to effectively lead and forward the mission of the company by providing guided expertise and curated experiences that assist in the creation of new opportunities for big swings of bold, resulting in expedited positive change and outcomes. She has vast experience across healthcare and research communities, with experience in developing and implementing strategic initiatives across basic translational and clinical research. She's led and directed large operational teams of clinical research and administrative staff. The mission of her company is helping brave leaders find their bold path, which to me is very powerful. And she's here to share her insights and advice on how we can do the same. Welcome, Lee. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So Lee, I gave a little bit of a uh, color on your background, but I'd love for you to expand on that and tell us a little more. Sure. So I have been in healthcare probably the majority of my career. I did have a short stint of uh, uh, several years uh, in education, but primarily in healthcare. And I've gravitated to really the world of research and focused in on the administrative and operational aspects of that. Um, I've worked uh, across large academic institutions, primarily academic medical centers is where I've really experienced um, all of the things that I've done and really been able to, I think, impact them both very positively. And I've learned a lot uh, in both of those entities, primarily focused on bringing together teams, implementing strategic plans, creating implementation of innovation, uh, and being able to advance to the next level of excellence really across the institutions. That's great. So Lee, what does it mean to you to take big swings of bold? What is, tell us a little more about that. Yeah. So that's something I've probably said a lot of my career, but I, I think one of the things that I think it means is really taking a chance and really not, and knowing that there's some unknown, but there's some potential positive, but there's no guarantees. And I think um, you could do this in life and personally, you could do it professionally. Professionally, so I think you know we take big swings of bold in, in our you know professional careers and in our personal lives probably all the time, and we just don't know we're doing it. Um, I think what I've noticed is not everyone can do it. I think you know I I think what I've not tried to do intentionally, but I think maybe it just has come just from my experiences and you know how I've grown up and those types of things is um, I like to think ahead. I like to be predictive. And I know things aren't guaranteed, but I also know inaction really doesn't lead to anything other than the same thing that you've been doing. So trying something and, and trying to plan for if it should not work, how you would address it. But I think more times than not going for it, uh, you actually see the results and they're positive. Uh, and you learn something, you may uh, feel brave, you may feel bold, you may feel like, oh, unknown or scary. I think sometimes all the emotions come into when you're taking a big swing of bold. Um, I certainly have done those uh, throughout my career and also personally and professionally. How can others incorporate this philosophy that may be a little more risk averse? Sure. What are some strategies that they can incorporate that will kind of mitigate that risk in their minds? Yeah. So what I've done is actually develop a framework around the big swings of bold, and it actually is the acronym bold. Um, so it's believe, own, learn, and design. So it starts with really believing, believing in yourself, believing in your expertise, believing that, you know, you were hired to do the job, let's say a professional, they know that you can do it. They know that you're an expert. They know that you have the skill sets. And you know they want you to lead and to, to be able to do things. I think permission to fail sometimes um, is not always just going to be granted. You just sometimes have to go. Okay, if it doesn't go well, I know how I'll learn from it and how we won't repeat it. And but more likely, it's going to go well, and you're going to learn from it and, and move forward. So believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing. Um, and you know that takes some steps, and obviously getting in, you know into some of the areas of that uh, through the framework. But that's that's a big piece of it. 
I think sometimes when you get into ownership, I think my experience is I've always owned, like, I think that's one of the things that sometimes I over own. I, I, I look to be a fixer and to help and to help others and, and to really strive to make a difference. But sometimes I own too much. So I have to, you know, I have to track myself on that and tune it. But I think, I think we need to own our, our successes as much as things don't work. And I think, you know, from the perspectives, uh, I think as women, sometimes we don't own all the successes. We sometimes focus on what doesn't work or what didn't go well or what we're not the best at or, you know, oh, I haven't called my mom or not, you know, my friends, I, you know, I, I haven't stayed in touch with them or I'm so tired of talking on a phone or Zooming, especially right now that I just can't even, you know, connect with the people that actually I get my energy from. So I think we're hard on ourselves sometimes. So really ownership is ownership of like all the successes that you've had. And then ownership if things don't go well. I think I'm a big believer in when things don't work, you should own it and, and figure out kind of how to move forward. And it's usually a group project. It's not just one person that needs to do something to make something successful. The L is learn. And I'm really big on that. I think throughout my career and personally and professionally in my own schooling, um, I've just been a lifelong learner. And I think there are so many things that we can learn, but sometimes we don't take time to actually think about okay, what could I've learned from that? Or what could I do differently? The pace and rate of the world today is, is just incredibly fast. And sometimes we're so busy being reactive that we can't slow down to think about, you know, was there a trend there? Whether it's again, business or professional, was there something that I've done a couple of times that continues to irritate me and I'm not really doing anything differently? Um, or something that went really well. I think we don't focus at times on the things that go well as much. And then the D is really then if you have done, you know, the BOL, then D is really, you now know how to design kind of the life path for yourself and the journey that you want to take. I think this comes over time, certainly in my early twenties and I'm not super old, but I think, you know, I'm in a good space. It's this kind of space. It's like, oh, I can leverage what I've learned at the same time. I also know where not to go. And I also know where to push and uh, where not to take certain things. And I think um, I think that's been helpful too, but it helps you kind of design kind of the life that you want to live. And really what I like to use is the word curate your journey, how you want it to go versus someone else feeling like they're designing, you know, your world. So I think when we get up in the morning, we don't go, oh, I can't wait for someone else to tell me what to do. I think we want to be driven by what we want to explore and, and what we want to accomplish uh, in our lives. So, you know, I think, you know, from the perspective of when we wake up in the morning, the key thing is to know that we're in control of, you know, our world, our path, our journey. Um, and, you know, I'm a big believer in you only live once and you never know. So I think I try to embrace every day and being able to design your own path, you know, and using the other letters of the acronym to help you get to that point. Um, I think you can lead a very successful life that you feel very much in charge of, of your own path. That's pretty cool. I love how you have the bold as an acronym. That is a very uh, detailed framework. And I think that it's a, a great framework to follow um, in order to be able to kind of incorporate this and overcome your own fear of risk as you're overcoming it. Yeah, you can take baby steps, right? So I think it's not like you have to like jump, you know, both, you know, feet into the fiery deep end, like I like to call it. So you can just take some steps. I mean, I'm, you know, from a perspective, there's things in my life where I would say I'm risk averse and there's things where I'm like all in and it's, it's something that you can tune for you and it's very personal. So I think um, it's really personalizing the framework for what works for you, but really thinking about, you know, are you happy? Are you doing the things you're good at? Do you love what you do? Um, you know, work is hard and we spend a lot of our life in our work, you know, place or, you know, in our, you know, doing our work. And we want to make sure that that time is a time of joy and feel like you're making a difference and, and doing, you know, the right thing for you just as much for the organization that you work for. Sure. And it's great that you can really take this and apply it to both personal and professional life because there are kind of challenges and risks that come along with both. So that's that's also important to know. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so Lee, if you're younger and just starting out in a career or if you're changing a career at some point, how important is it to find a mentor that will help you frame your bold as you move forward? Yeah, 
I think that there's several ways that you can do this. And certainly throughout my career, and as I've, you know, continued to grow up in my executive roles, I think there's key things that you can do, and, and they probably can be applied across, you know, whatever industry you're in. I think there's also, you know, the word mentor versus advocate uh, versus sponsor. So I think there's also some digging into those that we could do too, but I'll, I'll start with mentor. I think, you know, the number one thing is, you know, whether you're seeking it or whether you have the opportunity to connect with someone is, you know, making sure that there's alignment, alignment between your, you know, your values, your goals, the things that you want to do uh, within an organization. A lot of the organizations are mission driven, certainly in the research arena and the academic arena. So I think, you know, making sure that someone, you know, for me is someone that I think can, you know, um, understand and have a high level of EQ. I'll just talk about my mentors. You know, someone who's open to someone who's a little bit, you know, rough maybe at the beginning, you know, because when we're younger, you know, I think we're, we're still learning and we're still trying to figure things out. Organizations can be highly bureaucratic. There can be a lot of politics. I think when you're younger and even sometimes when you're older, it's hard to navigate it all. And uh, when you're just trying to do the right thing for the right reasons, um, I think sometimes that can be difficult. So having someone who's understanding and, and you can understand you as a whole person and is in alignment with your values is key. I think sometimes you have to go look for them. They're not going to look for you too. So that's where maybe being a little brave and bold comes in is, you know, reaching out and saying, would you like to have a coffee? And, you know, can I introduce myself to you? And sometimes those are easy to do for people. And sometimes it's harder uh, to do for others. And um, what I would just encourage you to do is, is try it. Um, and it, it, it's a little easier now, maybe with the Zoom, because you don't have to be in person, and maybe that takes a little bit of the pressure off. Um, but I try to actually, even now, keep you know in my you know, who who did I meet new this week, and reach out to someone new in a different industry, maybe even just to connect with them. I think having a mentor, I think, is then leads to them potentially advocating for you or helping guide you into certain areas or experiences that you want to have in your career. Or just being an ear to say, you know, I, I think that's the right thing or, ooh, you know, be careful how that comes across because even though I know you, this is how someone else may, may perceive it. So I think helpful advice there. And then ultimately, they may be someone that sponsors you in an organization or that you, they may hand you off or kind of, you know, you know, connect you with someone who can say, here's Lee and I think she should be on the board and I think she should be in the lead or on this committee, et cetera. So I think it kind of, you know, as, as you go through your career becomes different levels of what may start out as mentoring advocation for you and then sponsorship of you. And that takes time to develop. And I mean, I think that's oh, yeah. important to note too, that, you know, you meet somebody and you start developing a relationship. It's kind of like a friendship where you kind of see how you work together. It doesn't need to be this formalized agreement oh, no. of somebody being your mentor. And I think that means those, those kind of, uh, misconceptions need to be broken down because it's like you know you and I becoming close and friendly and then over time all of that can develop and, and show through so you know even reaching out to multiple folks and seeing what a good fit is is also yeah, yeah it kind of is a flavor too like and as you were talking I was just thinking about the layers of something because you know you and I may connect in a, a certain area of you know connection of either a personal professional area and someone else may be super skilled in something that I just want to learn more about. And they're a great person to, to learn from. And, you know, personally, we'll love to get to know them, but, you know, it's more so kind of their expertise that would be super helpful. So kind of even layering in some of the pieces and parts to the mentorship journey is helpful um, and being able to, to connect with multiple people. And an important piece that you said that I just want to underscore is it does take time. And then I think what I've noticed as I've gotten older is people who I was maybe mentored, I'm now colleagues. So like, you know, I've, I'm not being mentored by them anymore. They're truly my colleagues side by side and we support each other. And we may now have our own mentors or folks that we work with uh, along the way. So Lee, how do you know that you've reached that stage of success or bold? And is that a static thing or is that something that changes you think as you move along your career or personal life? Yeah, so defining success. So I think that's an interesting one, especially to ask me. 
Um, I'm extremely, I challenge myself regularly. So I think, you know, I'm, I have to actually get reminded by others that I'm successful, that I'm doing, you know, and that's something I need to work on. <laughs> You know, so I think, I think I'm very proud and thankful and grateful for everything I have done and the experiences I have had because they have led me to exactly where I am, which is where I'm supposed to be. Um, but I think along the way, I'm like, oh man, I could have done that better. Oh, I could have been, you know, you know, softer there, or I could, didn't need to be so straightforward or, but that's part of the learning. So I think that's success. So I think if you are learning along the way, you're understanding where you may consider where you you know didn't do so well or where you succeeded. I think that to me that's success. Um, you know, I think I'm a success just because I feel like you know I I continue to try to do my best and to strive for the next level, whether it's being a better mom, being a better sister, being a better daughter, being a better wife. Like it's all you know, and I'm I'm not saying that I have some some issue. It's just like, okay, you know, could I spend more time or could I do something differently or could I tune in here or even being better to myself? Like that was something I had to learn, I think along the way too, because I was given a lot of it away, not keeping very much for myself. And that creates some imbalance for sure. So I think for me, success is really defined by, you know, how you make a difference who you're supporting and helping and, and caring and providing for and loving. And I think to me, ultimately, I feel like it's success every day just because of that. Uh, and then from a professional standpoint, I continue to just want to keep learning and doing more and helping more and, and meeting more people that I could support their important work with. You bring up a very good point on the learning because um, I think that it's really important to acknowledge whether you consider something a success or failure or something in between. I mean, if it's like, yeah. you know, you're not a failure, you're not a, you know, yeah. there's things that you could do better or do differently. Um, you know, learning from all of those experiences. It's so critical. Yeah. Having that honest discussion with yourself about whether you did something to your best capacity or not, or you could have tried harder or whatever. I think that the learning is so critical because just acknowledging it will allow for your mind to open up enough to be able to potentially do it differently the next time. So that is a success. And I think we need to celebrate even that acknowledgement and that you know next step that you're taking towards what you consider success. Yeah, and letting it sink in. I mean, those are pretty heavy words, right? Like when we say I failed or I succeeded, like those are can be loaded words as well. So I think, you know, for me is, you know, lighten up. <laughs> That's what I say to myself, <laughs> lighten up a little. Um, so I think, and, and other people say that to me as well. So I think, you know, from the perspective of sometimes we worst case scenario ourselves, like, you know, too much. And I think we could do a better job of going, yeah, that could happen, but let's just actually think about what positive can happen. And I think as I've gotten older, and this is easier said than done for sure, is really just knowing that there's a plan and you're on that path. And because I am such a planner, I would love to have this the overview or just even the Roman numerals of it, but I don't have them yet. You know, I'm just kind of experiencing it. Um, but I think if you're open and you're, you're, you're fair to yourself as you are to others, I think you can really learn a lot from everything that you're already doing. And most likely you are already a success. You know, you've, you've done something in your life with regard to your family, or you've gotten a degree, or you, you know, you started that nonprofit, or you're part of a committee that's making a difference in your community, um, you know, or you adopted a dog. I mean, these are all successes to me, you know, in so many different ways in the sense of, you know, you're already successful. I think we just don't think that way. I think we sometimes think the what's next too much. I, I agree with you. And I think that's something I've struggled with myself. I think that there was always that plan, that path that I wanted to know ahead of time. But once I let that guard down and didn't necessarily look for what that plan was in the future and was open to the possibilities of what could be out there now that maybe are different from what I ever thought, mm -hmm. that's when my world expanded. And I felt like I was really... Um, happier as an individual, uh, both personally and professionally. Yeah. And, and that is, you were bold, you know, so 
you know, so from that perspective, I, you know, those are things that sometimes you're not really sure, like, you know, whether you change careers or whether you ask for that role that, you know, no one's offering it to you, but you're advocating for yourself, which can sometimes be the most nerve wracking thing, uh, especially if you're an extremely humble person and a lot of great people are. Um, so I think, you know, it's those types of things, like you said, it's just kind of letting go of some of what you thought something should be or what others thought you should be. Um, and just really embracing kind of what is and being present. And I think it's kind of funny uh, for me, like, I don't think I was present very much um, until most recently, probably in the last year. And there's a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons though I can talk about that's a fun one is just, we got a new puppy and you know, you're out there and you know, you have a schedule and you got to get on the Zoom and you got to get back in. And um, I think what's interesting is, you know, um, her name is Maple and she's a English retriever. And so I think from the perspective of that, you know, she didn't care that I had a meeting and she'd be sitting out there and the wind would be blowing and she would sit down and like, you could just, she was just taking it all in and it would cause me to slow down and go, okay, I'm going to stand here and take it all in too. So that's just my small example of being present, but sometimes your children can help you be present too. Sometimes your husband, I mean, your friends, it's just like, I'm not thinking about the moment that I'm in right now, which is probably your most important moment. And sometimes we're just so busy thinking about the what's next. And so I thought that was a, a cute way for me to be reminded uh, of how to, how to be present. Lee, let's quiet those voices from the outside world. Yeah. that they prevent you from being bold because I think that's a problem that a lot of women struggle with is that sometimes you know you want to be bold and then there's the naysayers or the um, maybe people that just aren't on the same page and how do you kind of eliminate that noise so that you're free to be bold without necessarily getting affected? Yeah I think that's easier said than done. I think I think when you're younger it's harder. Honestly, I'll just speak from my own. So I think I looked outwardly for approval or for, you know, go girl and you got this and yes, you can move forward. And, you know, I think you're ready. And, and now I'm like, I don't want anyone to tell me when I'm ready. I know when I'm ready. You know what I mean? So it's just a, a little bit of a turn, you know, from that perspective. And some of that comes with just gaining confidence and also seeing, you know, how you work and the outcomes that you have along the way. But I think what's been interesting, I think, in my life is just seeing as you progress and as you learn more about yourself, you become more empowered. Um, and really, you can empower yourself, but I think you have to start really weeding out the negativity and the people that aren't happy for you when you're happy. And I think as you get older, it's interesting to see as you, you become happier, you're doing something that you're you know, you're not sure, of, but it's successful. I think it, you know, you're really looking for, you know, someone called them my league of champions, you know, my coach. So I think, you know, you want your league of champions around you, the people who are your inner circle, who are going to, they're going to be honest with you, but they're going to cheer for you no matter what. And they're going to, you know, be there when things don't work and they're going to be there when they do. And I think sometimes the naysayers can, can actually limit you if you have too many of them around you. And I think as I've gotten older, probably my league of champions has become a smaller group, um, but they have been just a phenomenal group to support me and to also help me uh, move forward. So it's important to weed out the negativity and you know when someone's not happy for you. Sometimes people like you better if you're miserable, you're unhappy, you're you know complaining all the time because they're doing the same thing and you're they enjoy having that person. But if you're not doing that, then they may not want to be around you and, and you probably need to close that particular chapter. Yeah, I found that as I grew older, those naysayers were people that I just dropped along the way. Yeah. And I think yeah. that when you're younger, it's harder maybe to differentiate between that and um, well, for sure. And, and be sure that you're making the right decision. And I think, you know, like you said too, my circle is tight, but it's, it's real. Yeah. Cause sometimes I think people's intentions may be good, but they still may be about them and not about yeah. you. Yeah. And, um, I don't think any, I don't think malintent of anyone initially. And so I think, you know, but I think they're maybe more hyper-focused on themselves than you. 
And I think those are people that don't belong in your closest circles. And um, like I said, they may have been something along your, your path or your journey for you, but they don't need to stay there. And I think, um, you know, just thinking about how to, you know, close the chapter on that particular person or relationship, because there's new ones ahead um, and the book's still being written. That's true. And it's a give and take, I think, with any relationship. And if you're constantly just oh, yeah. giving to accommodate for whether it be insecurity or whatever that somebody else is struggling with, um, it, it takes away your energy and it just completely depletes you from getting to that state of bold in whatever it is that you're trying to do. Yeah, because being bold is like it's, you know, has its own fearful aspects of it, but unexpected or not sure you know, how will I do X, Y, or Z if I do this? And sometimes it's just like taking that leap, um, you know, for someone else may never even want to do that or think about that. So they may be so scared in a way that they actually try to encourage you not to do it because they would never do it. Um, so, yeah, so I think it, it's something, again, that comes with experience and confidence in yourself and letting go of some of maybe some of the negativity that you've heard either when you were young or as you've grown up. Um, and it takes you know, a little bit of work. You have to, you know, I feel like you have to work on yourself throughout your whole life. And that's how you become a better person. And that's how you learn more about yourself, which then helps others. And so I think that's the key thing too, is just make sure you make time for yourself and to, to, to you know, be good to yourself. Knowing what you know now at this stage in your life, what would be advice yeah. that you would give to your younger self? Oh, I think I've already said it. I think just give them a, give yourself a break. I think, you know, my younger self, I think um, I was very, and I continued to be very driven, but I think as I was younger, I think being driven could be seen as, you know, someone that's, you know, just going to barrel through something and be a bull in the china shop type of moment. Um, I have a lot of expertise, but sometimes if you go too fast or if you're too straightforward in the sense of I'm a very straightforward person and I just, that's how I operate best. But not everybody receives it the same way. So I think, you know, I think just maybe breathing a little bit more, taking it a little easier. Um, and I think, you know, for my younger self, I think I would always say just, you know, also, you know, make sure that you have a little bit more time for yourself and some balance. I think when I was younger and even most recently, I was, you know, easily working 12, you know, 12 hours, 14 hour days. So I think, that leads to just unhealthiness. And I, you know, I think, you know, to stay healthy mentally, physically, uh, and make, make sure you take your, take care of yourself personally, um, so that you can actually give back to wherever your profession is or your work is. That's great advice. I love it. And it's something that we all need to do better at constantly. Yeah. We need to remind ourselves to do that constantly. Yeah. It's yeah, easy to get swayed by whether it's your personal life, professional, you, you know, it's easy to kind of in find the imbalance and kind of focus in one area more than the other and it's really critical to kind of stay focused and stay healthy and uh do what's right for you yeah yeah it's it's easier said than done a lot of what oh, I've said. and it's a constant you know it's a work in progress and kind of you know whether it's a reset that you need to do weekly or something that you just at the end of the day go okay this is where I'm going to reset, whether you meditate or whether you journal, or and those are things I've tried recently that I never thought I could do. Um, I think those are ways to kind of clear your mind a bit and kind of, you know, just let things simmer down because it's just such, you know, there's just a lot of things happening and a lot of good stuff. It's not negative, but it's just a lot of things coming at us. Um, and I think sometimes we just need a little bit of time uh, to mentally downshift. And I think that's a, a healthy way to do it. And that's probably something else I would do, ad, you know, you know, advise my younger self is to just kind of simmer a bit and kind of just be able to be and whatever way that looks, it could be a long walk, it could be a jog, it could be jumping on a Peloton. Um, who knows, I haven't done that yet. So I'm not a Pelotoner, but there's a lot of people that love it. And just kind of that's also a camaraderie as well Is just how can you be surrounded by people that make you feel good. And uh, that's the key thing. Well, Lee, this was extremely insightful and really fun to kind of hear more about you and how we can all take great uh, big swings of bold. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, thank you very much. It was great to talk with you.